Hi, I'm Sam. Have you ever considered if the butterfly effect could be real? Could the flap from this tiny butterfly's wings here in Chicago cause a tornado or a hurricane over in the UK? Could an absolutely tiny action have a monumental consequence? So as we learned from our butterfly slow-mo a while back, butterfly wings do indeed create little vortices that help to give them lift as they fly along. But to be honest, the pressure waves coming off their wings probably don't dissipate more than a couple of inches before getting dampened and absorbed by the air. Even the billion monarch butterflies that descend on Mexico to overwinter don't seem to have any impact on the local weather conditions at all, as far as we can tell. But what if bacteria was caught in the updraft of a butterfly's wings and entered the atmosphere? Could that cause a monsoon? Well, bizarrely, that notion is more in the realm of reality. A recent study found that eight kilometers above us, there are colonies of bacteria thriving on clouds. Now, not only does this make them among the fastest organisms on the planet, with so-called jet streaks capable of moving at 300 kilometers an hour, but it also makes them among the most hardy. The researchers found over 100 different species of bacteria, including the infamous E. coli, that they'd otherwise found all over the planet in oceans and freshwater and soil. It turns out that these bacteria might form nucleation points in the clouds, allowing atmospheric water to aggregate around them to form ice crystals before falling as snow, hail or rain. Not only does this suggest that bacterial colonies could cause storm clouds to form, in that monsoon for example, but it also suggests that clouds could act as vehicles for bacteria to invade new parts of the world as they fall to the surface in raindrops. Now, whether that's a genius evolutionary strategy or just a happy coincidence is anyone's guess. But it does suggest that by using an antibacterial wipe, you could affect the amount of rainfall in Africa. Maybe. So then, thanks to our heartless bacteria removal, could a huge herd of elephants, now running to find a new water source, actually cause an earthquake? Well, what if they ran at the exact resonant frequency of the Earth? You can think of resonant frequency a little bit like pushing a swing. If you push it at the right time, with a little bit of force, you can get it to go higher and higher. If you push it too soon or too late, it just won't work. Just like the swing, the Earth does have a natural resonant frequency known as a free oscillation. But you'd need a huge force to figure it out. A huge force like the Great Chilean Earthquake of 1960, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded. Whilst this quake caused massive devastation, it did for the first time allow scientists to actually measure the resonant frequency of the Earth. It oscillated every 54 minutes. Fortunately, thanks to its incredible size, the Earth is unlikely to tremble to quake proportions, even if an elephant could slow its jog to one step every 54 minutes. However, humans have been known to shift bigger weights around. A study in 2012 suggested that if humans can provide even a bit of a push, like oil drilling, the 54-minute seismic wobbles that that might create could send us over the edge into inducing a huge earthquake. An epic example of wrong place, wrong time. And it doesn't stop at earthquakes. The butterfly effect of simple actions that you and I do really does have a noticeable impact. For example, as I'm driving here, I'm puffing a little bit of CO2 out of my exhaust and that's puffling up into the atmosphere and adding to the so-called greenhouse effect, which is making the planet a tiny bit warmer, albeit a tiny amount. But fortunately, the ocean might absorb and mop up that CO2 for me. Way to go, ocean. But unfortunately, that little bit of ocean is now probably a little bit more acidic, and in turn will probably affect some marine microorganisms which normally produce little sulfur compounds, which normally bubble up to clouds and make them more reflective which in turn cools down the planet. So now not only have I made the ocean more acidic, but I've also accelerated the warming of the planet. Not only that, but the incredible strength of Hurricane Sandy, and according to NASA scientists, many extreme weather events have been attributed to global warming. So whilst the jury's out on butterflies causing tornadoes, it's not looking too good for me and you. Ultimately, it's really hard to predict what kind of impact any of us will have, or indeed what kind of impact this butterfly will have. So we recommend you tread softly, and we'll see you next time. Just how much space do we need to survive? Well, according to the UN, the bare minimum amount of agricultural land needed to support just one person is 0.2 of an acre.